Thank you for your attention. There are two really stellar people that I want to make sure and introduce you to who you're going to see throughout the week. Um, and you know what? I'm going to let them introduce themselves. I will say these are two of our um, first cohort scholars. They were with us last summer. They've been with us this whole year, and they're here today. And I will let them introduce themselves to you now. Hi, I'm Ashley Widmer. I'm one of the University of Alaska Anchorage scholars uh, visiting and just helping out for the week. Uh, hi, I'm Sean Van Walgren. I'm a scholar from Clackamas Community College, transferred here uh, in the fall last year. So I, I actually had this conversation with a few people earlier today. Uh, to, to walk in here today and then to sit down next to some new people and have some breakfast and to just overhear about half a different, half, half, uh, sorry, uh, half a dozen different languages being spoken around the room, just the amount of diversity in one single room and then to have it in the cultural center, I mean, it just is, is an amazing, amazing experience to be a part of. Uh, the things that we will accomplish together as my cohort, as your cohort, and together as a team is going to be phenomenal and amazing. And I'm just really happy you're all here and take great advantage of it. I know that Sean and I, we met last summer and actually spent probably all five days hanging out after orientation. And uh, I just want to welcome you to the uh, build, ori uh, build Exit orientation this year. And I hope that you all make amazing connections with people from other universities and just have these lifelong uh, friendships. So thank you. Um, I really wanted to bring them up because, you know, during the, the moment you all were meeting each other, we had a chance to connect, and I think that um, so many of us have been so involved in this process for so long, we sort of forgot. Last year when we did orientation, um, we had the PSU-based orientation where folks came, but then we also had a, an orientation in Hawaii where our Pacific Rim partners came. This is the first time in the history of our program um, short history still, which is only the second cohort, but um, that we've been able to bring everyone together. So for the first time, you know, you're sitting in a room with people from really far away and really close by geographically, and um, it's just so exciting. And I think, you know, having Sean and Ashley point that out to me helped me remember that um, it's pretty monumental. So we're just so thrilled. And I know you're probably sick of hearing it already because I feel like we've said it 10 or 20 times. Do take this opportunity to connect. You're about to hear from Carlos Crespo, the PI, um, the principal investigator, the lead researcher for this project, and he's going to share a lot with you about what Build Exito is all about. And um, considering that you applied and that you made it, you already know something of what it's about, but um, there's a much bigger picture there. And part of that bigger picture is about building a cohort of scholars, building a cohort of scientists, of researchers across our universities, across the U.S. and beyond, right? Um, to address these issues around health and health disparities and the issues faced by a lot of the communities that we come from. And so part of that is forging these networks now. These are the people, the people you're sitting with, the people in this room that you're going to be making change with throughout the course of your lives. That's our goal anyway, is to give you the support and training, everything you need, the mentoring, all of that, um, so that 5, 10, 15 years from now, you're maybe running a program like this too, and you're out there doing research to address these issues. So making those connections now and forging those, like Ashley and Sean were talking about, you know, a year later, here they are helping us out, and we're so grateful, and uh, trying to hype you all up and see the potential. So without any more um, from me, we're going to bring up Carlos. And um, Dr. Crespo, I'm sure, will do quite a thorough job of introducing himself, but I will just say, <laughs> but I will just say, um, and I already mentioned it, so this is Dr. Carlos Crespo. He is the um, director of the School of Community Health here at, um, at Portland State, about to become the School of Public Health with OHSU. He is um, a joy to work with, I will say, <laughs> total joy to work with. Um, I have the opportunity and privilege of working with Carlos in our capacity as researchers and faculty here at PSU, but also being researchers on this grant together. He is the, um, I don't think it's too much of an overstatement to say, the mastermind behind Build Exito, um, and he will tell you 
we are one of 10 awardees. So 10 university consortium partnerships across the US were awarded this fantastic honor from NIH. We're one of them in, in no small part and probably completely due to the efforts of Dr. Carlos Crespo. So he will tell you all about what we're doing here. And um, I really encourage you to pepper him with all kinds of questions because he loves that. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Well, thank you and welcome. Dr. Don Richardson deserves a big round of applause for getting us here and having this thing running smoothly. Uh, I am extremely thankful that I slept last night, actually. I knew that it was going to be taken care of. Thank you, Don. There are a lot of other people who have been working behind doors for, to make this happen. Dr. Don Richardson, one of them. Uh, there's a lot of other people that I, I will mention some names and I know I'm going to forget some others. But uh, you met Caitlin Beal. Uh, she uh, welcomed you earlier. Cassandra Ramirez, she picked you up at the airport sometimes, some, some of you. Uh, Dr. Tom Keller, uh, who is the uh, adult in the uh, room. Uh, uh, because I um, cannot be counted on that. So when we need adult supervision, he's there. Uh, uh, Carol Gabrielli, uh, Jen Lindell, who you already met, uh, Kay Logan, uh, if you think I'm the mastermind, she actually pushed me and she encouraged me and she enabled me. Uh, is she here? All right, there you go. Uh, that's how we got here. Uh, you also have to thank uh, uh, your chaperones. Uh, Margaret Matthews is here. She also uh, collaborate with the research learning communities. But your chaperones, who uh, they're here, we, you, you know them very closely. Uh, your mentors, uh, your peer mentors. And one person, is, there are two people who are not here. Daisha Wolf, uh, who is not here because she's working, uh, because we have so many other things happening. Uh, and uh, we have one other person you probably met. His name is Charles Daniels. He is the proud dada of a boy who was born uh, a couple of days ago. Uh, and uh, I might have forgotten some other names, etc. cetera, but uh, I, I have uh, a muscle cramp on my face from smiling for the last half hour. And uh, this is something that we uh, planned, but when it happens, it's, it's really, really, really exciting. Uh, and 10 years from now, one of you will find a cure for cancer or find something that will prevent cancer. No pressure. Uh, <laughs> but uh, we, we have a lot of plans for you, and we want, this doesn't happen uh, just by chance. People have to be trained. People have to be motivated. We know you're motivated, uh, so we're going to do our part to match that motivation to get you to the next level. It's a long process. Actually, up at OHSU, there is a person who actually discovered the cure for uh, the major uh, leukemia, uh, Dr. Durkin. I was just speaking with somebody about that. And I've met him. He looks normal. He's just like you and I, you know? <laughs> He's got two arms, two legs, and nose. It's just like a regular person. Uh, and, and you will see, you will be exposed to all these mentors that we think they're like, wow, this is somebody that is completely uh, unapproachable or is not like me. But you will see that we all, we all started somewhere. So I want you to believe in yourself. This is going to happen. And we'll provide you as many resources as possible for you to concentrate on taking care of my kids when they get sick and you're the researcher uh, taking care of them. So I'll try to go quickly or uh, take my time just to go over an explanation of uh, Bill Exito and then have some time for questions uh, at the end. So uh, you probably asked yourself what does Bill stands for? So now you can see what, what it means. Uh, and then Exito in Spanish it means success. Uh, but actually, it stands for enhancing and cross, you know, you, know, you have to get creative with these names. Uh, cross uh, <laughs> disciplinary infrastructure and training in Oregon. All right. Who got this? I can do this. I have a PhD. Okay. Help. All right. So, we are part of 
No, it works now. There you go. Did you all hear what I said earlier, though? Okay. <laughs> so, so we're at this stage where there is a national crisis in terms of diversifying the workforce. We also have a couple of other things happening. One of them is our baby boomers, you probably have heard the term before, are retiring, people are getting older, and the workforce that takes care of people are, is not diverse enough. So we need to make, have efforts to actually take advantage that people are retiring, some people are getting older, and all these uh, jobs in healthcare are opening, and we want to take advantage of, all right? Take advantage of diversifying the research and other uh, workforce. So, briefly, if you look here, uh, we have three major goals. Diversify the health research workforce, and that includes biomedical, behavioral, social, clinical, engineering. Uh, innovate to transform undergraduate research training and mentoring. Uh, we don't do a lot of that. Uh, we usually, you come to the university and you take your classes. Uh, yesterday we had commencement, uh, long commencement. Students extremely happy that they actually finish. Uh, I'm extremely happy that they pay their tuition. Uh, <laughs> But it's a culmination of four or five years. Some of them were in the 10-year plan. But uh, after graduating, you move on and you try to innovate. But uh, research at the undergraduate level is not a huge, huge priority. So we want to engage students in research early. And then these things do not happen in a vacuum. You have to create institutional change. Universities have to agree to be flexible and allow the students to engage in research. So in this case, it's Portland State, but we also have partners in other places. We have community college partners, we have partners who already have four-year degrees, and they are also engaged in innovating and creating opportunities for students to engage in undergraduate research. Uh, this is a lot, a lot of words, uh, but basically it's what we are the goals of Build Exito. Uh, enhance the infrastructure, uh, implement innovative mechanism, uh, and evaluate what we're doing. If we all do all these things and we don't evaluate whether it works or not, and we have, uh, is Adrian Zell here? Oh, oh, there you go. There you go. And uh, another, I told you I was going to forget some names. But we have people who are in charge of making sure that what we say we're going to do, we're doing it, but also to evaluate if we actually had an impact. This is your cure for cancer, I said, 10 years. I don't think you're going to, you could, who knows, tomorrow. But it will take some time, and we need to measure it, and we need to assess whether we made progress. And if we fail, where is it that we fail? Uh, You've seen this before, probably uh, we, we have a primary university being Portland State University. Uh, our research intensive partner is the Oregon Health and Science University. So if you look up the hill, you can see it from here. Uh, but you'll be there, you, you're gonna be visit the Oregon Health and Science University. It's a research intensive uh, medical center. Uh, and they do a lot of uh, excellent research. It's heavily funded by the National Institute of Health. So that's our research intensive partners. Then we also have the other partners from uh, Clackamas, Portland Community College, Clark College, to Alaska, Guam, and Hawaii, which are four-year institutions. We recognize that we have uh, a wide variety of di geographical diversity and cultural diversity. Uh, let me check the next slide here. These are the other universities that are getting the same awards that we, we receive. Uh, Cal State Long Beach, Cal State Northridge, San Francisco State University, uh, University of Alaska Fairbanks, Portland State, Morgan State University that's in Baltimore, it's a historically black college, uh, Xavier University, same, University of Texas, El Paso, University of Maryland, Baltimore campus, and University of Detroit. If you look at the map, they don't have <laughs> the, the level of diversity that is in this room. 
If you think about Morgan State University, they're working mostly with African-American students. If you look at University of Texas, El Paso, they're working mostly with Latino students. You are so privileged that we have a lot of cultures in this room. You're going to learn a lot more than just working with people of your same cultural background. And that is priceless. I hope MasterCard doesn't sue me for using the term. But that's priceless. This, these are tools that will stay with you forever. We have students from Hawaii, from Alaska. We have students from uh, different backgrounds. And this is a, a tool that is actually is going to benefit you as you move on professionally. I have something to learn every time I meet somebody from another place. Uh, there are other two uh, supporting uh, grants to all the build sites. Uh, one is the uh, Consortium Evaluation Center, and the other one is the National Research Mentoring Network. So these are two uh, grants that are supporting us as we do this. Bill Exito has five major components. One of them is the student core, which is what we're doing today, and Dr. Richardson is a co-director of that uh, student development core. Again, this has to happen in consortium with other activities. One of them is the administrative core, the other one is the institutional development core, and the other one is the research enrichment core. And I'll briefly touch on those so you know that there are other things happening in order for you to be trained and, and be able to uh, achieve your, your professional goals. The Student Development Corps includes a variety of things. It uh, starts with dedicated advising, so we know that you will have an advisor in your respective department. So if you're in biology, there's a biology advisor. If you're in chemistry, if you're in health studies, there are advisors. But we have one central person that you can call anytime you have a question, and that's Charles Daniels. Uh, and he will guide you, he'll be a traffic controller, and it helps for you because that way you always know that if you have a question, you can always reach somebody. We also have Carol Gabrielli, and we have other people. But he is a, a, what we have identified your uh, dedicated academic advisor. We also have somebody on the payroll who does financial aid advising. So 8% of his time is to help you navigate financial aid. We realize that uh, you're very smart and uh, you're going to be able to be successful but these things do have to happen, and you do have to navigate financial aid. Uh, we have uh, student financial support uh, as you move from uh, uh, sophomore to junior, uh, providing some uh, financial assistance for you to get you here. These are things that are available, and uh, some of these things are two words that I've been learning a lot, allowable expense and a non-allowable expense. Uh, and as you go into university, you start talking long words for saying simple things like, no, we can't pay, yes, we can pay. So it's, a, <laughs> it's an allowable expense, not allowable. And, and they're very nuisance about who is, uh, is allowed to spend certain money and who's not. So uh, we have a, an entire group, and I'll ma mention it in a, in, a, in a minute, that works with the uh, budget and some of these decisions, I don't make it. Uh, we, you have their so student summer training. Uh, it's a summer induction program right before you enter into a research learning community. Uh, we support students to travel, some of them to travel to conferences, professional conferences. Uh, we have uh, an outreach to uh, students who have been through the foster care system. Uh, so there are students, scholars, who have been through the foster care system. And there are some specific projects at Portland State and another of your campus that actually have specific outreach to students who have been through the foster care system. We have peer mentors. Uh, we have research training embedded in your training uh, as you go through college from freshman to senior. 
Some of you know it, some of you have been exposed to some of this, and it's done differently in different campus. We know how we're gonna do it at Portland State, but we also know that at some campus, you have to provide the flexibility to do it in a way that best fits uh, your needs and your curriculum. The diversity that you see in terms of universities also have diversity. We teach here quarterly basis. So we have three terms, uh, fall, winter, and spring. But in some of your campuses, it's just two semesters. And that creates some coordination. That means that sometimes when we start here in end of September, you've been in school for already a month or so. Uh, and how we embed our training into your curriculum is also requires a lot of coordination. Uh, and we do want you to go to graduate school. So as you move into senior, we'll help you. We'll help you network. We'll help you find uh, other universities, maybe some of the same bill grants uh, that are uh, throughout the states. But at the end of four years, you will be highly competitive. And I am going to fight for you to come to Portland State to graduate school. But the same thing is going to happen with other sites. You're going to be highly valuable because you will know certain skills. You will know how to contribute to writing an, a grant from NIH. You will know what are the most important things in putting together a research proposal. You will know uh, how to be of assistance to a principal investigator in putting a, a grant, how to uh, collect data, how to present data. So all these things are going to happen to you in the next three or four years. Don't get scared, you can do it, okay? I did it. Uh, not very well, but I did it. Uh, <laughs> uh, there are other partners that are doing similar work. I don't know if you have heard of McNair Scholars. Uh, there is the Louis Stoke Alliance for Minority Program, and that's a similar group that uh, aims to promote uh, research in the science uh, the Howard Hughes Medical Institute group, uh, the honors programs, the Bridges to Baccalaureate. These are other similar programs to PSU, and we're going to be collocated uh, in a building here at Portland State. So it, again, it helps the students not to have to navigate through the entire campus to find resources. So <clears throat> institutionally, we have done a couple of things. We have pilot projects. Uh, these are, uh, I think I have a slide on that in a minute, but these are grants that we are making available for faculty, and it's $50,000 or so, and the faculty puts together a proposal to do a small pilot project. We have people who review those grants. There is none of us. We find reviewers externally from Harvard and John Hopkins Small Schools, East Coast. Uh, and what we ask them, though, is that proposal has to have a mentor plan. How is it that that project is going to involve the students? How is it that that project is going to provide research skills to the students? That part we take very seriously. The scientific part is very important. We have three people who review these grants, and they score, and we select the top ten, and, and then we give the money, but the most important part for me is how is it that these pilot projects are going to include you in developing that research proposal and implementing it. So those pilot projects, we have, uh, we have renovated space, uh, a place for you when you are here on campus and you don't know where to go or if you need to study and you need access to a computer, if you need to talk to an advisor, if you just want to be alone, so we have a space for you. This will be your home. And the idea came to us because if you think, I don't know how many of you come to uh, university that have uh, athletic programs. We have an athletic department, and there is a, a gymnasium. And I see the athletes going there. Sometimes they don't even have to be there because they don't have to study or anything. But that's the place where they go, and they feel at home. They feel safe. So we want to create a similar space for you so you can go and you will be next to people who are McNair scholars and there's a lot of other Exito scholars where you can go and maybe find a peer mentor, maybe tutor somebody, maybe listen to a presentation, etc. So that's, uh, it's called uh, 
it's going to be in the Kramer Hall, and I think we're going to have a chance to uh, stop by during this week. Uh, a keystone of Exito is as research learning communities. So you will be placed with a research mentor, and that research mentor already has an ongoing research. You're just going to be a tag alone, somebody who just show up, and you're going to be a, a, a member of that team. And each research learning community is working on different topics. We have uh, some working on cancer biology, some working on indigenous health, some working on urban ecology, a variety of topics, researchers who very, uh, are very committed to what they're doing. This is their, their bread and butter. This is what they do. And they are taking one, two, three, four, five of you to be part of the team and, and nurture you as a researcher. And that actually then creates this interactive mentoring and you will have peer mentors, career mentors, and research mentors. Uh, we're also working on transfer agreements. So when you go to a community college and you transfer to Portland State, so you don't have to take more courses than you need to. Uh, some of the community college already have a co-admission. You can actually take courses uh, concurrently while you're at Portland Community College and at Portland State. Uh, we also plan to have uh, faculty from your home institution come to Portland State or move from Portland State to go to Alaska or Hawaii or some of the other universities and collaborate, because that collaboration is how we are able to get the students involved in research that is happening in both places. So before you come here, it would be great if you already are, know a faculty from Portland State who's working on a research project. Uh, these are the students that uh, we're trying to recruit into Bill Exito, uh, underrepresented students in the, in the sciences, uh, students with disabilities, students from uh, the foster care system, or economically disadvantaged students. So you probably cannot see this, but last year we started with about 68 students. This year, we have 94, 89 of you are here, and these 68s are here, so there are 162 of you. There's a special handshake that you, once you, you will know who you are. Uh, next year, they will have, we'll have 96, and 94 of you, and 68 will be 258. And in a couple of years, there will be 354 of you, and then those graduates, and then another cohort comes, and we hope that will be renewed for another five years and that these groups get bigger and bigger. It's, it's rather ambitious, but uh, I must say that I was enabled by my, my friends who say, yeah, yeah, do it, do it, do it. Uh, but we are really excited. We're really excited. I think we, uh, we, we hope that we can do this at least for uh, five more years besides the, this first five years. Uh, we want to take away this financial worry from you and uh, what when you become a junior uh, there will be a stipend so it's a steady monthly income and there will be a percent of your tuition up to 60 70 percent will be covered by Bill Exito. The idea here is that you don't have to get now a second job to pay for tuition part of tuition is already covered and you have some stipends. It's not an hourly wage. It's not like uh, you're getting paid uh, uh, by the hour. This is a stipend. This is like we give you this money, and it's, it's an entire package. You volunteer. You work at the RLC. You become a peer mentor. You perhaps uh, answer the phone for an hour. There's a, we are a team, and we want you to contribute back and, and help, uh, help other uh, new Exito scholars. Uh, this will happen during your nine months. Uh, there is a summer induction, which uh, we're not going to ask you to do stuff and, and pretend that you're not going to be financially remunerated. So there will be some funding from there. We'll help you also find other scholarships. And... Uh, <clears throat> This would allow also, if you need to travel and present, we will support you in that respect too. So we want to take away this, this worrisome of how am I going to pay for this? Uh, 
we, we, we will pay you as much as the federal government allows to pay, okay? As much as it's an allowable expense. Uh, the Research Enrichment Corps starts with uh, developing a curriculum that includes research training. Uh, we'll have career mentors. Uh, we have a curriculum uh, that m is going to meet your needs next week. Uh, we'll have a curriculum one entire week between Portland State and our partners to look at how are we going to create an innovative research uh, undergraduate research curriculum for you. The administrative core uh, includes a variety of people. There is an executive leadership team that includes Tom Keller, Daisha Wolf, myself, and Cindy Morris. Uh, we have grants management. We have uh, staff leadership uh, committee. We have an oversight steering committee. We have people from uh, many universities that are here representing, and they actually are people who uh, are like presidents of the University of Guam the president of Portland Community College, the provost. Provost is like uh, the, the, the most important person in the university next to the president sometimes. Uh, and they are in charge of the academics. So we have the provost from Portland State, the provost from OHSU, the vice president for research, chief diversity officers, and, and other volunteers. So they, they make the oversight steering committee. And we also have the National Institute of Health has a dedicated person to oversee us. This is the member of the Oversight Steering Committee. Here's the disciplines that we have identified. You probably fall in one of those, and if you're not in one of these disciplines, uh, just let us know. But it's, you're not going to be a medical doctor only. You're not going to be a nurse. I know that's what our parents all told us. When you grow up, you're going to be a doctor. You're going to be a nurse, right? That's fine, they're good people too. Uh, but there are a lot of other options, okay? I didn't know what an epidemiologist do, and I didn't know what an exercise physiologist did. I didn't know all these things, and then I was able to learn, see people, and say, you know, this is more fun than carrying a beeper and seeing sick people from six in the morning till eight at night. But if you like to do that, that's great. We'll help you. We'll help you. <clears throat> These are examples of research learning communities. Uh, here's an example of the pilot projects that I mentioned earlier. Uh, we went through that. If you, this, this is on the web, but this is basically what we tried to do, and it took us 60 pages to explain all this stuff. Okay? Uh, so as a freshman, you have advisor, you have student support service, you have multicultural support from freshman to senior. That's part of your support environment. In curriculum, you start with an engagement, you have a sophomore gateway course, and then you go into uh, more research. Uh, there's a summer orientation, that's this one. Next year, you're gonna be doing the summer induction, and the following year, you're doing a summer immersion. Uh, Research experience, you start with a paid research experience between your summer induction on the last two years, and you will be part of a pilot project, maybe, if your mentor uh, receive a pilot project. Most of the people in research learning communities are funded. They actually don't need the pilot project, so you don't need to worry about you having a pilot project or not. But if that research learning community has a pilot project, you will be involved in that, and you will be involved in independent research and uh, you will have peer mentoring supporting you. Uh, you will have career mentors and research mentors. So at every stage of your, we have it all planned. You probably don't know it, but we, we think we know what we're doing. <laughs> okay, so that's, that's the last summary, and I, I think we have a couple of minutes for questions. Yeah. All right. I was so thorough. <laughs> yes. Okay. And okay. And these are the ones that we propose. And the proposal, everybody in this list sent a letter and uh, and and explained how they were going. Then once we got the grant, they forgot. And they said, "Oh, I didn't know I was going to do that." 
So, but we're going back at them, and these are that existing one, and there's some new ones and people who are not funded anymore, et cetera. But these are the ones that we, we have proposed. So, uh, so I'll repeat that. So the website, uh, go.pdx.edu slash exito, has a list of the current and existing research learning communities. And as we get more students, then we'll uh, open up more research learning communities. Dr. Radhika Reddy is the person in charge of developing the research learning communities. And Dr. Margaret Matthews, at OHSU is working with the research learning communities at Oregon Health Science Universities and the research learning communities in Hawaii and Alaska and Guam. Yes. Can, wait, can I just nope. add one quick thing yeah. um, about the question about research learning communities? Um, as you can see on the orientation agenda, pretty much every day except Thursday we have research panels. The majority of people who are going to be up here talking about their research are representatives of our current RLCs or research learning communities and the ones who aren't are people who are interested in becoming um, RLCs in the coming years so that is who you're gonna have a chance to hear from you'll hear about their research we're gonna have students coming in that are in current RLCs to talk to you about their experiences so we'll have lots more details about the RLCs for sure and if I oh there we go we'd love to get your questions on the mic so we can make sure they're on the video so that's great thank you I was just wondering who's the best person to talk to about your collaboration with McNair. Is there a Build Exito point person for that? So uh, Charles Daniels used to work at McNair's, and Toutu Faleva is the director of the McNair Scholars, and he's actually uh, from Samoa, and he's the person who uh, has been working directly with the American Samoa Community College. Toutu Faleva, and now we'll, we'll make sure you uh, meet him. I know Carlos already mentioned he's on paternity leave, but go ahead and send him an email um, and he will be the best person to connect you with the people you need to connect with. Oh, Charles Daniels. Any other question? All right. Thank you very much, and I look forward to playing with you the next four or five days. Thank you. Thanks, Carlos. Um, so one question that didn't come up, but I definitely saw some eyebrows, some quizzical expressions when Carlos was going over um, some of the tuition stuff, and I just want to say it, it's very confusing because we have partners here that are from community colleges. We have partners from other universities. We have PSU here as well. Later on today, we're having what we're calling site breakout sessions. We'll have those today, tomorrow, and Wednesday. And that'll give you a chance, for example, the Alaska folks to meet with the Alaska site directors and faculty. And they'll go over just really in detail the specifics around what the support looks like at your particular site because that's different. So apologies for any confusion about that. Um, it's hard to capture the breadth of this partnership in a few slides and plus I was telling him 30 seconds, you have 30 seconds. So apologies for that, but you will have a chance to get that clarified.